Today is November 18th, 2014, and we're speaking with Andrew Tanner, Vice President of Customer Support at Pratt & Whitney. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, you're responsible for the aftermarket and customer support at Pratt & Whitney, and is, you're, you're the guy who takes the call whenever something isn't right. Uh, Pratt & Whitney is introducing six different versions of the uh, GTF engine on 13 different aircraft models of five unique aircraft families over the next five years. Uh, the design and development efforts for the engine and the breakthrough architecture are all well documented and known. But behind the scenes, uh, preparation for entry into service and getting your cu customer support network up to speed seems to be a, uh, a daunting task. Uh, how is Pratt & Whitney preparing for the GTF engine entry into service with aircraft manufacturers from four continents, customers from six continents, hundreds of airlines around the world, some of, you, some of whom you know well and some of whom you've never even met or worked with before? Well, great. Thank you very much. Um, this is, uh, these are really, truly exciting times at, uh, at Pratt & Whitney and um, for the Gear Turbo Fan Engine programs and all our programs. Um, you know, Pratt & Whitney really is a, a global leader in, uh, in the marketplace. Uh, we have, um, at Pratt & Whitney Commercial Engines, we have over 470 customers today all around the world, um, flying in probably every country that, uh, that, that exists. Um, together with Military Engines and, and Pratt Windy Canada, we probably have over 11,000 uh, customers around the world. So really, like I said, uh, a global customer base, and, and, uh, and we like to think that we're a, a global leader in the, in the aviation business. We're really excited about uh, about exactly what you just said. The 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 six aircraft that we have on, on at five different aircraft manufacturers with the with the Bombardier C series, with the Neo uh, A320, uh, with the uh, Mitsubishi MRJ. Uh, of course, we also have the the Irkut uh, MC21 and uh, the two platforms with uh, Embraer. Uh, these, these are these are great times. Um, a lot of work, a lot of investment, a lot of time has gone into developing the program. Today we have over 12,000 hours uh, of engine test. We have about um, 1,800 hours. 1,800 of those hours are actually in flight on the, on the various uh, flying test beds that we have. We have over 25,000 cycles. So we have a lot of experience on the, in the design and the development and now the certification of, uh, of these engine families. I think through, this, through these efforts, we've really demonstrated the, 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 geared, the geared turbofan engine uh, capabilities and the architecture uh, itself. A lot of successes. Uh, recently, we've had the um, the first flight of the of the A three twenty Neo. We've also had uh, the rollout of the of the Mitsubishi uh, MRJ recently. Lots of momentum. Lots of momentum building. And as we move into the aftermarket, we are really uh, capturing that momentum and really building on that momentum as well. Um, uh, together with uh, with our sister company at. Uh, at uh, uh, UTAS, we really have a, a very strong position in the, in the global uh, aftermarket um, aftermarket uh, place. We've put together a very strong and very experienced team of of uh, professionals to uh, to take this product and bring it into into the uh, into the aftermarket. Um, we're leveraging as much as possible our um, our robust. Uh, robust relationships that we have with the aircraft manufacturers, uh, all the aircraft manufacturers that I mentioned, but also with the airlines. Like I said, we, we're on a, on a lot of different air, airline platforms around the world. We're also using um, Pratt Whitney Canada and uh, and their relationships that they have in the regional uh, in the regional market uh, around the world. They've tr tremendous and fantastic relationships. So we're working very closely with our with our, our, our with Pratt and Whitney Canada. So together, all this momentum is building and building, and, and we're capturing this momentum and using this momentum and, and driving as we, as we move forward. So one of, the key, one of the key elements that we have to make sure of is, lever is taking this momentum and leveraging scalability. And what do I mean by that, scalability? Well, the geared turbofan today was designed as being a, a scalable architecture. So if you look at the... the the Embraer or the or the or the or the C series or the Neo or any of the other ones, if you look at the engines, they're really a scale of one to the other. This has been tremendous benefit as we've gone through the development programs, uh, learning one one platform to the next. This has also been a tremendous benefit as we've we've started the ramp up of the of the products and the manufacturing of parts. 
uh, parts um, similar one to the other has really helped in, in, uh, in uh, that process. Same thing with the aftermarket. We need to build an aftermarket um, and an entry into service process that is scalable. Uh, learning one, one product to the next product, learning one airline to, to, to the next airline. So to do that, we've established a, what I would call a relatively or a very rigorous um, entry into service process. It's a gated process. It has several gates that you go through about every three months. And you go through these gates with each airline. So, um, and it starts 15 to 18 months before entry into service. So 15 to 18 months before entry into service, we start a uh, conversation, we start working with the airline, working with the airline and the aircraft manufacturer as, as, it, as it may be. On day one, it's really about um, getting to know who the players are, them getting to know who we are, um, and, and, and laying all that out. As you move through and as you get closer and as you move through different gates, they become more and more intense. Somewhere in the middle, you start working on making sure that uh, tooling is in place, that um, manuals are in place, that spare parts, um, either orders or parts are in place. And, we, and it really goes through, all the way through, to the entry into service and beyond entry into service. So our last gate is really beyond three, three or four months after entry into service to make sure that we've captured all those learnings. So one airline to the next airline, we're learning one to the other. So really scalable. Coordinating EIS and aftermarket support is clearly uh, not going to be an easy task, as that gated process uh, you explained uh, is there. You've got training, you've got logistics, you've got spares, you've got maintenance, tech pubs, repair processes, and linking your technical experts with the, with the airlines uh, should any problem uh, occur. What types of things are you doing to innovate in this area, and is your customer support going to be as innovative as your new engine? Well, that's a that's a that's a great question. You know, an innovation is not just about just about the engine and the product itself. There's innovation in in, in the services that we have as well that that go uh, that go right along. Um, I like to look at it in, in several different ways. You know, starting with what we call the Global Operations Center. The Global Operations Center is is uh, is our operations center that is is open 24/7. It actually never closes. 24/7, 365 days a year. Uh, it's lived through uh, hurricanes, it's lived through ice storms and snowstorms, and re remained open. It's always open. It's an opportunity uh, uh, for our customers to, to call in and get a real person, a live person, to answer any question that they, they may have. We staff this, um, this facility with really experienced people, with people who know Pratt & Whitney, know our products, know how they work, 20, 20 plus years of experience um, all the way through. Um, and of course, that team has full access to to uh, the rest of, of Pratt and Whitney's organization. If they need to have um, uh, perhaps a spare engine, they have access to spare engine people. If they need to have repair service, they've got apps access to the repair service, and so on. Uh, a great and dedicated team of people. So as we move and into the world of the geared turbofan engine, we're also looking at how do we leverage and how do we build and how do we innovate on the tools that they use. So what kind of um, uh, IT tools can we help them uh, do, the, do their job? Um, so let's start with data. Data is very powerful. Uh, understanding where the engines are, understanding what the engines are doing, data is very powerful. We're building tools to be, um, to be more proactive, not reactive, to be more proactive in how we're monitoring our fleets. Um, that way, decision-making, again, can also be uh, far more far more proactive. Um, this includes uh, using tools, uh, database tools that are far more, uh, you can query them much more easily than, ever, than we've ever had before. So if the question has been raised before, really quickly you can see that that question has been raised and answered before. Get the answers. Uh, much greater uh, and much faster uh, response to, uh, to the demands of, of what, our, what our customers are looking for. We're also working in collaboration with uh, IBM. Uh, you know, Pratt & Whitney, we're, uh, we, we have a very strong uh, uh, engineering organization. We've got a lot of experience. We've got great analytics. But we're collaborating as well with, with IBM in the world of, of big data. Um, uh, again, to try and be uh, more um, proactive in, in how we um, uh, look at our fleets so that we can be more proactive that um, on, uh, on an engine, an engine by engine, when it comes into the shop, we can maybe even have its work scope 
uh, determined at, ahead of time. These are all tools that we're working on uh, in, in these kinds of uh, collaborations. Um, and then training is another area you mentioned training. It, it, we're also working a lot on um, innovation uh, on the training side. Uh, more 3D tools. Um, you're able to see parts operating in 3D, see how parts uh, in the engine uh, work with other parts in the engine m far more um, effective than, uh, than what we've had ever uh, in the past before. Um, much more um, online training. Uh, online training can serve a lot of, a lot of purposes, but um, uh, it can be general familiarization, um, a way to get more people uh, tooled up and trained up in, in how the, the, the product works. But it can also be a great tool to use as a refresher for someone who has been through a class, been through training with a, with a live instructor, been through hands-on training. They can then go back and, and refresh later on, a year, two, three years later. So we've been doing a lot of work and in innovating on um, online, uh, online training. And really, for us, next steps, next steps include leveraging uh, tablets, leveraging uh, your handhelds, you know, your telephones and whatever, and building those, uh, building our training tools into those, uh, to, into those as well. And that's all active uh, today as well. We understand that uh, part of your innovation is also using simulation in a customer support and customer service role. We're all familiar with flight simulators, but how do you use simulation in some of these advanced technologies? in the customer support organization? Great. Well, uh, another great question. Thank you. Um, I, so I talked a little bit about new tools. So as we, as we get into the simulations, we, we leverage these tools. Um, what we're all, one thing, the first thing that we're doing is we're taking these tools and we're not waiting until the gear turbofan engine comes into service. We're taking these new tools and we're actually putting them and using them and leveraging them on our existing fleets today. So on our PW4000s, on the IAE product, the V2500 and so on, we're using these tools today. Learning them out, uh, making sure that they're, they're, they're ready to go. So that's the first thing that we do. So now we have these tools at our, um, at our, in our hands. I talked about the gated, the, the gated process before. Well, one of the things that uh, we want to do with our customers, those are the airlines, but with our customers as well with the aircraft manufacturers, is do simulations, like you just said. What's a simulation? I like to call it a dark and stormy night. So it is um, the middle of the night on a holiday, and you need a maintenance. You're an airline, you need some kind of maintenance. Uh, what do you do? Who do you call? Um, how does Pratt take the call? What does Pratt do with, with that call and so on? We're going to do... Uh, starting um, uh, months before an aircraft enters service, we're going to run through simulations. We're going to run through simulations with the airline and with the aircraft manufacturers. We're going to simulate these dark and stormy nights. We're going to pretend that we've had some kind of a, a question or some kind of a, a maintenance uh, action that's required. Let's do it. Let's simulate it. Let's see if did it, did it work, did it not work. If it, if it works, well, that's fine. If it doesn't work, okay, let's learn from it. Let's, let's adapt. Let's move. Uh, and then simulate again. You know, it's all about it's all about um, continuous improvement, right? So we we uh, may we may uh, do everything right perfectly the first time. Chances are we're going to want to um, we're going to want to uh, uh, adapt. Um, so that 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 is what I mean by simulations. We're going to go through these simulations uh, with the airlines. We're going to start obviously with the with the first airlines that are entering the service, and then based on those learnings. We will see how we adapt to the to the airlines that are that are taking product uh, to later on. But we really see this as a, a great way to, to collaborate uh, both jointly with the with the airlines uh, and the aircraft manufacturer in a in a successful entry into service. Based on your experience with other engine programs and EIS, what are, what are the five key elements that that have to really be right for a smooth entry into service and how are you preparing those? I guess the C-Series late next year will be the first uh, EIS for the, uh, for the GTF engine. How are you preparing for that uh, EIS? Well, that's great. Uh, actually, both, um, both C-Series and, uh, and the Airbus uh, NEO will enter service uh, uh, next year. Um, so everything, everything that we're, we're doing is really active on, on all our programs. And before I talked about scalability, we're also making sure that everything that we're doing, we're learning uh, across programs and for the, for the new programs as well. So if you think about sort of five key areas, um, first is uh, really upfront preparation. That means making sure things like, like tooling, uh, manuals, uh, training, all of that is, is available, has been, uh, I'll call it road tested, 
So we're using our engine testing, we're using the flight testing at the aircraft uh, manufacturers to, to try out tooling, to, to, to test out our manuals. So, so number one is, is really about, about preparation, those, those upfront things. Um, number two is what we talked about. It's about uh, simulations, it's about learning, and it's about, uh, it's about adjusting. So uh, all, all the elements that we talked about a, a minute ago, and again, leveraging um, the flight test. Uh, we are, uh, we have uh, our reps who uh, are field reps, our first field reps who will be uh, supporting the product when it enters service are, uh, are going to uh, the flight test programs and are participating in the flight test programs. And they're actually treating the aircraft uh, as if they were in service and using the same tools and again simulating and trying and we're learning and, and adapting. So that's really the second thing is that, is that, simu is that simulation thing. The third is thinking through contingency plans. So what do I mean by contingency plans? It means um, spare parts. Uh, we may, it, it may be a case where we have to have spare parts. So let's look through and see about what kind of spare parts ordering do we need early and, and up front. Um, it means uh, MRO organizations, MRO facilities, um, uh, just in case. You know, we, we want to make sure that we've got MRO facilities uh, in place for, for entry into service. The fourth element for me is, um, is again, being more proactive. So it's the prognostics and the diagnostics that we talked about, uh, again, a minute ago. Making sure that those elements are, are, are there and that we're are in place or uh, that, uh, so that we can um, really work uh, and drive um, a successful uh, EIS. And then the last part, um, I think it goes, it goes probably without saying, is teamwork. Uh, the way that this is uh, the way that this is going to be successful is um, all of us working together. Now, teamwork inside of Pratt and Whitney, we have a lot of organizations in, in, inside of Pratt and Whitney. So, teamwork inside of Pratt and Whitney, uh, and also teamwork with with the customer base, all very important. So, those are the, the five elements that I would say. Now, clearly, customer support can't work independently of the rest of, of Pratt and Whitney, and most aerospace organizations are known for their for their silo mentalities in, in certain within within groups. Uh, how do you break down that mentality at Pratt & Whitney, and how do you get through to get everyone to cooperate together? Well, that's a, a, a great tech great question. You know, we are um, we're laser focused on on the gear turbofan engine programs. Uh, if you look at um, uh, the success that we've had um, on the programs up until now, it's been about uh, this laser folk this laser focused approach. It's about people working together to make sure that we we achieve the things and we do what we said we were going to do. Um, if you look at the engine deliveries for the A320 uh, NEO first, first flight, they were delivered right on time. They were delivered right on time and, and on spec. We did that by many organizations working together. How have we done that? Well, we've done that by, by putting together joint teams. Teams within Pratt & Whitney covering all areas of, of the, the company. Um, engineering, uh, organizations working with the program organizations, working with the customer support organizations, in an integrated product uh, methodology. We've, we've further enhanced that by co-locating teams. So we have an integrated product team all sitting together uh, desk by desk by desk. So that way that the communication is enhanced. Um, uh, far, more, far more effective at making sure that we're, we're, we're working together. Same thing with the aftermarket. Um, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm responsible for customer support. Right next door is the person who's responsible for the spare parts. Right next to him is the person who's responsible for our, our engine services programs uh, and, and so on. We're all co-located, uh, uh, working together. I think that's gone, um, that's gone a long way to help um, uh, make the, the coordination and the integration between the organizations here um, far more effective. We also have our teams on site at the airlines. So we have our customer support, uh, field support reps at the airlines. Uh, when we go uh, and start these entry into service gated reviews, we're leveraging that on-site team. They already know the players at the airlines. Uh, the airlines know them. So we're working together with them, again, to make sure that there is that, that, working, that working together um, uh, 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 notion or that effectively working together. It's, it's all about, it's, it's a team. It's all about a team. And every, everybody on the team has a role to play. And uh, we're all, we're, we're playing together, we're talking together, and we're living together. Okay. With, 
with uh, by the hour maintenance agreements becoming uh, more and more popular, do you expect a significantly higher percentage of the uh, GTF engines to have maintenance coordinated by Pratt & Whitney than on prior programs? And what new challenges does that represent for your aftermarket organization? You know, I said earlier that these are exciting times uh, to be at uh, Pratt & Whitney with a, with a new uh, engine family that we're bringing to market. Another reason why this is a really exciting time to be at Pratt & Whitney is we're also transforming uh, the aftermarket and how we approach the aftermarket. Um, we're transforming from really a, a time and material kind of aftermarket to one that's far more um, service, uh, product services uh, 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 focused. Um, today uh, we have uh, Power by the Hour programs, uh, fleet management programs. We've seen that um, engines that are on fleet management programs um, have far more predictable uh, maintenance, fewer UERs, uh, sorry, un uh, unexpected engine removals, mm -hmm. um, and, and really great longer time on wing. So really um, a, a much uh, more, um, fewer surprise environment and predictable environment for the, for the airlines. Um, because of that, um, we're seeing that there's quite a bit of, there's a lot of pull from the airlines for, for this, kind of, uh, this kind of a service offering. Today, we have about 40% um, of the PW4000s 4, on, on some kind of a, a power by the hour type program. That goes up to about 60% on the IAE V2500. V for, the, for the geared turbofan, because of the value uh, and uh, the geared turbofan engine programs, because of the value that uh, the, uh, the airlines are seeing, we believe that that's going to be uh, north of, of the, what we're seeing today on, on the V2500. Um, we have a we have a, a network that that we are building. Um, it includes uh, all our um, uh, partners are, are in the network where we're leveraging their experience base. Um, we know that this is we're going to be very efficient when we when we pull this uh, this this the, the network together. Um, uh, and of course, airlines that have their own MRO capability are 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 absolutely fine to to join in to join in with us. Um, we feel that this is going to be a very successful, a very successful way to to go after uh, the, the marketplace. Um, expectations are high uh, today. Customers are, are are looking for, like I said earlier, uh, far more predictable predictable uh, uh, approach to, to maintenance. We feel that uh, with these power by the hour programs, we have that uh, that that solution. Um, some airlines may want to go uh, do it themselves. Uh, they may want to go to third parties. That's fine as well. We will support that absolutely, but uh, we are gonna we're gonna live up to the expectations of the of the airlines and and do what it takes. Uh, we are we're confident that we are gonna meet their expectations. Well, thank you, thank you very much. It sounds like your uh, your programs and your gated approach uh, have given you confidence that you're going to meet the aftermarket challenge, and we appreciate your time today. Thank you very much.